We are attempting to show through this video the varied pattern that pulp tissue can take as we view its breadth and width as we travel coronal apically through the length of the mesial root of a mandibular molar. We use surgical length high speed round burrs to gain the initial access followed by the repeated use of Munz burrs to follow the pulp tissue as it travels apically. To more clearly demonstrate the cross-sectional configuration of the pulp as it travels apically, we cut back the circumferential enamel, dentin, and cementum using a barrel diamond. This short trip down the route confirms what micro CT scans and the earlier HES studies have shown, namely the unending varied pulp tissue inclusions that may be present throughout the length of the route. Please note that early on we disparaged the notion that there are two distinct canals in the mesial root. While there are a couple of points of easy entry for an endodontic instrument to enter, we can easily observe an isthmus of tissue connecting the entire length of the canal that is simply not negotiable even with our thinnest instruments. As we journey deeper into the root, we see what appears to be a separation of the mesial buccal and mesial lingual canals, only to have them joined together apically prior to exiting out the apex of the root. Cross-sectional shape, they are likely more the exception than the rule. Two, if we attempt to produce tapered round preparations, we will often miss a good deal of the tissue residing the outlying reaches of highly oval sheaths of tissue. Three, if we do not prepare the canal space to at least a 35 apically, we are reducing the effectiveness of our irrigants either placed passively or activated. Four, if we attempt to make the major diameter the standard for shaping the minor diameter, we will undermine the strength. Five, in short, if we encounter highly oval pulpal inclusions, the best strategy we can employ is an attempt to widen the entire length of these spaces to a 35 apically while removing a uniform layer of circumferential dentin from all the walls of the canal from the orifice to the apex. Appreciating the highly varied anatomy that the pulp tissue can have makes us realize that many of the systems introduced to shape the canals do not address these variations. Rotary Naitai is mostly limited to producing conically shaped spaces that according to the research leaves a good deal of debris on the walls of oval canals that constitute the major diameter. Their tendency to separate also creates an incentive for conservative preparations that will leave more tissue remaining in the canal while often providing less than optimum canal preparation for adequate irrigation. The reciprocating use of a single NITI file system has further aggravated under preparation of the canals. When we consider the fact that rotation leads to clogging of the dentinal tubules, particularly in the apical third, and according to the latest research that rotating NITI induces microfractures, we can end better understand why despite the introduction of so many innovative products, the success rate for endodontics has not increased over the past 25 years. Hopefully the accumulation of evidence pointed to the reality of pulpal anatomy as it is, rather than as we wish it to be, will give us incentives to use more versatile systems to shape the canals more thoroughly and safely.